Hey, 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 guys, this is Hawkeye, and I am back with another episode of Fishing Classic. And we are taking part in the 4th of July event that is still going on until well past July 4th. We think we've got another 8 or 9 days. I'm not exactly certain, but I do believe, yeah, 7 days now. I just switched over. So we have 7 more days to complete this. Lots to do. And I've already walked through and showed you what and where to catch for the fish tag coordinates mission. And that was at Falcon Lake and Rocky Lake. Now, the way it works is that you do not open each of these coordinates missions until you actually complete one. So, like, once three is completed, four opens up and you know what you're supposed to go after. I have a little advantage here because I can actually look and see where these fish are located so I can actually save myself a little bit of traveling time here guys and that's the truth of the matter <laughs> honestly instead of going through fish tag coordinates 4, 5, and 6 in order what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these lakes and make the determination which ones I could catch at each one with while saving myself the travel time now for fish tag coordinates Four, there is one you can get at Naharan, one at Quanchkin, one at Everglades, and one at St. Croix. At five, Mudwater, Quanchkin, St. Croix, San Joaquin, and Canee Creek. So two of them are also Quanchkin and St. Croix are found on both of these fish tag coordinates. And for five, you've got Everglades and San Joaquin and Canee Creek. So you get some repeats of locations for these coordinates missions. Well, since Mudwater is the first and cheapest one to go to, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you guys this is for Fish Tag Coordinates 5. So what we need to do is we need to go to Mudwater since it's the cheapest. We'll start there. I believe it's the grass pickerel using the stars and stripes shad could be chain pickerel but I have a feeling that's going to be either at Quanchkin or St. Croix but yeah no I think the historic muskie would be at St. Croix but yeah I think the grass pickerel is where we what we are going to be going after using the stars and stripes shad two inch so Let's go ahead and go to our globe here. That's the only one we need to get there. We got the white crappie there previously. So let's jump to Mudwater River. I know this is a lot of jumping around, but it saves me a little travel time, and I can at least get you to see where these fish are to be caught. Now this is for the coordinates mission 5, not 4. So let's go on in here. Make sure I have my stars and stripes shad, I believe is what they said it was. So here it is. I'm probably going to need, let's see, what does it require? 2 watt to 4 watt. Well, let's find the right size hook here. Okay, here's a 2 watt. That should fit it just fine. And there we go. Now, just to make sure I got that right. Number five, Stars and Stripes Shad. Okay, that's exactly it. 
so we're going to come in here. This is the shed where the grass pickerel will probably be found. And we're going to go ahead and jump in here to a new private room. All right, we are going to go to the best spot to catch these guys towards these stick ups. And I'm going to take it a little further into the peak here. And we're going to see if we can't get one of these guys. We'll also be able to do a cannonball salute while we're here. Now, this is not exactly my favorite type of lure to use for grass pickerel, but it's what they're requiring. Actually, let's try over here. I usually do a little bit better on this side of things. Again, the same stick-ups, just from this perspective. You can already see there's plenty of activity in there. There we go. Definitely required a bigger, faster presentation here, guys. But there he is. And it's a new personal record on top of it, too. I've been getting a lot of those. Historic grass pickerel. And they are found in mud water. I was a little unsure there for a minute if they were found here, if it was the chain pickerel, because chain pickerel are found here, too. Wasn't sure if the historic were. So that clarifies that for sure. It's not a bad looking fish. 2.138 pounds. Let me take a look at this fella up close here. Yeah, it's decent, very decent for a grass, that's for sure. I think that puts him around a trophy size, maybe. Yeah, let's get a picture of him just to make sure. All right. Keep him. Now that's the only one we need to get here at Mudwater other than White Crappie. So let me go back here to the missions. And that was found under the fish tag coordinates 5. So that takes care of him. Now the next lake we need to go to probably closest to us would be the Naharan River. Now there aren't any off of this one, but there there's one off of Fish Tech coordinates four and six both, I believe. No, just four. And it looks like we're going after the historic smallmouth bass with the American spin bait. I was sure there was another one from Naharan, but apparently not. Nope. Nope, strictly that. Alright, then we will go ahead and go to the map. And leave. And next stop, Naharan River. Let me take a look at the peak periods here. Cloudy day, so we need to advance time here just in a moment. But we come way over here. I do have a spot where I caught the unique smallmouth. I bet you that we're going to have the same luck catching the historic there. Now, let me check here. Put my map up here and see where that was. That's the long nose gar marker. Snakehead. There it is. Unique smallmouth bass. 
I caught that with a three inch worm, believe it or not. So let me go ahead and fast forward time to here. Didn't help a lot with the light. Now let's see, I think the Thor will probably be required for this one. Yep, that is optimal. And it looks like we can actually put a tail on this if we wanted to. Or actually any number of things. Let me see if you can, yep. We might be able to put one of these on here too. Let's see. Revolutionary Claw might increase our odds, our fireworks too. Let's put the claw on there. And step it up here a little bit. There we go. Be cool if we got another unique. <laughs> yeah, the unique smallmouth is really t really tough to catch here. Took me a long time. There we go. We got something. I don't think it's what we're after though. Uh, might be a young one. Just seems too small. No, it's largemouth bass. There we go. Okay, I think this, well, I don't know. Not 100% certain if this is what we're after or not. Yeah, it is. There we go. Historic smallmouth right at that spot. Now, how big is he coming in at 5.119 pounds? There we go. Good lighting there, actually. Historic smallmouth. Go ahead and get a picture of him, too. It really didn't take very long, but let me go ahead and give you the coordinates to that, guys. Like I said, it was the same spot that I used for the unique. Now I am right over here. And here's the coordinates 46.10, 15.55. And I think, just for sake of clarity, we're going to mark the historic as well. 23.09. I mean, it's practically on top of it, so. And you can see that cluster? That's right where you want to throw it, right through here. And you will get them. Alright, before we leave, I am going to go ahead and hit, check out that cannon, which is, I believe, well, actually, I think it's on the other side. I always think it's on this side. It's over here. Near the bridge, the smallmouth bass bridge. Ah, and there's a revolutionary crawl claw. Ah, I can't say that. Revolutionary crawl two inch. 
that's one of the ways you can get them guys and you can get more fireworks at the flag all right and I think we'll go after one more fish here well actually it might depend on how many are found at that particular location let's see here so after Naharan we've got Quanchkin, Everglades, and St. Croix actually I think there is something at Falcon which is a little closer yep we've got one at Falcon and Falcon would probably be the rainbow trout yeah, you're not going to find striped bass, bull trout, or common snook there. So let's go on. We're going to be heading on back to Falcon Lake. Now this is rainbow trout. And I already in the la I think it was the last episode I caught of rainbow trout. I've got a great spot for it. We need to figure out what we need to use to catch that fella. And I believe it's a fish coordinate six that we have to go there. Yeah. So the old glory grub, two and a half inch. Okay, I've already got this one set up. But what size am I going to need of the hook for the old glory grub? Two out to four out, so that doesn't change. We might as well just go ahead and switch off this for this. It should work just fine. This seems kind of big to me, but I guess that's what they want. Now we're going to go over to the cascading waterfall here in a moment, but before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and shoot off another cannon since we're here. Let me put this away here. Ah, didn't get a lure. I didn't get anything off that one. That stinks. <laughs> well, it can happen. It definitely can happen. I don't know if you could still go to these after you shoot off all the cannonballs or not, but I think you can. Alright, let's go ahead and shoot on over to here. You can walk here, but it's faster just to, to do that. But yeah, right over here at this rock, and you throw it. I don't know if you can really tell. But way out there. Oh, shoot, I keep grabbing the wrong rod. There is actually a line of lily pads or hornwort or something. But if you throw it right out there and bring it in this way, you can get rainbows fairly easily. Let's get it to a better peak here. And I've been having more luck with a slow presentation here at Falcon. So we're going to take it down to about one. Let it get all the way. Well, it looks like I got a snag. Yeah, that darn hornwort. It's very deep here, so it does take a while for it to sink, but I would let it sink as far as you can. we go and let's see I don't know it doesn't seem that big not Oregon red band trout <laughs> it's a good spot for them that's for sure I've been catching them every time I cast over here so I have to keep that in mind when I'm doing the uniques.
There we go. I think that's our fella. I think this might be him. He's definitely a jumper. There we go. Nope, it's a brown trout. Dang on it. <laughs> Catch everything but what we're after here. Alright, I might try over here too, because I have caught them at weird times. What is that marker over there by any chance here? Hmm, historic rainbow trout. Well, if I put it there, I put it there for a good reason. Got something. That's another Oregon red band. <laughs> they are a pretty fish, though. There we go. Let's see. Yeah, I think this might be it, guys. I think this might be our fish. Yeah, it's not a brown trout this time. No, it's just a regular rainbow trout. <laughs> well, heck. <laughs> guys are being being persnickety There we go. Yeah, let it sit for a minute. That's one thing that's really important with these trout species. Using a stop and go, slow retrieve, especially here at Falcon. And let it sit for just a second. They love to come back and pick things up. There it is. 4.755. Yeah, I think that is most likely a trophy size. That's the final one for the day, guys. Let me see what he looks like. Yeah, the biggest one we've caught so far. Nothing I've caught here is so big that I can put him across my lap, though. Which I like being able to do better because you can get a better, better feel of the size. But let me go ahead and get a picture of him. And that's it, guys. Not bad. Not bad at all. We'll keep him. But that's all you have to go for here at. 
Falcon Lake. There's quite a few of them, though, that we're going to be going to searching for. Wait a minute, let me... Oh, yeah, I already did mark that. Let me go ahead and give you that marker here, guys. So that is at negative 2286, negative 6441. And that was from the previous time. Uh, good gosh, it's been... <laughs> 6 30 20 21 when I caught that one so it's still a good spot obviously let me take one last look here at the missions now in the next episode I think we're going to be heading on to the Everglades there we're going to get the historic butterfly peacock bass you can catch them there. I think Quanchkin's going to have the largemouth bass. And then it. Let's see. I don't think we're going to need to go to the Everglades here. But there is another one where we need. Yeah, the common snook. We need to catch the common snook with the slew nymph. And that will pretty much. I'm not so sure. Let's see. Historic striped bass? Maybe. Let's see. Falcon, Everglades, San Joaquin. Nope. Striped bass will be caught at San Joaquin. Alright. Well, looks like that's what we're going to be going after is the butterfly trout, or butterfly peacock bass, and the historic common snook in the Everglades. And from there, well, I don't know if we'll do another one after that or just stick with those two, but. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please be sure to share, comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll be back with another episode of Fishing Planet. And until then, guys, as I always say, aim straight, cast far, have fun. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.